Okay, this is video three in a series for Twin Motion, and we're going to be going over uh, when to use the built-in Twin Motion tree assets versus importing your own. Um, and just to note, there's a couple of really strong reasons to use only Twin Motion trees, and the the best case for this is if you have a view where this this tree we've got in the front yard here if if I've got a view distance um, of about oh let's call it 60 70 feet away it's a great time to use only twin motion trees but if I have a view distance of something like this where I'm, I'm 10 feet away you're gonna notice very quickly that the twin motion trees just aren't as high detailed as you might want them for your particular shot now this is a tree that was imported from the model which was built in chief architect and I know already that it's not a good enough model for what I want to be able to use this rendering for so um, first up let's just take a look at one of the twin motion trees there's a couple of different ones here, and I feel like it's very clear to me um, what version these came from. As in, I feel like some of these trees were modeled for a previous version and just ported over to the 2020 version. Uh, and the reason I say that is because some of these models are a little bit better than others. Um, and namely, a lot of the ones with roots seem to just be of better quality. Um, and not all of them carry roots that, you know, dive into the ground such as uh, this sweet birch tree so let's just grab this tree and place it into my model into the same spot and we're gonna see right off the bat you know it looks pretty good but it doesn't look great it's very clear to me that um, how this tree was built there was some instancing done um, kind of like a scatter method where they just took a branch and they took these um, these other little sub branches and then they apply similar to what we went over in video two where we're talking about how this grass is created and how it's um, how it's physically created how it's a model and then it's instanced over and over again with some collision detection some random scale and random rotation same thing happens for these tree leaves now the great thing about the twin motion trees is they respond to weather um, and they also respond to seasons amongst other things. So um, when we get into our our contextual menu here for location, weather, and lighting, uh, you can see if we go into the weather tab and we change, you know, the weather, you can you'll see at the rain kind of interacts with the leaves. The leaves are blowing around. Um, if we change the season, you can see the leaves change season. You can see that it'll even, you know, remove the leaves as as we turn it to a snowy climate. Um, that's all fantastic. Great way this is, you know, again, Twin Motion is is built off of a video game engine, and this is a, a great implementation for video games, right? Where I need to have this tree be dynamic, but for the purpose of just getting an exterior rendering um, for Arch Viz or arc viz however you'd like to say that i'm probably saying it wrong um architectural visualization tool uh this tree is just not good enough for my liking as soon as i back up to oh that's kind of that 70 foot mark 80 foot mark all of a sudden that tree looks pretty dang good for what it is and keep in mind i can select this tree and i can change you know the age of the tree which is essentially is changing the overall size of that tree and and as I scale it down it even looks better from this distance right but as soon as I get it in close again I just start to see little discrepancies it just doesn't look as good as I want it to be so for a really high-end exterior rendering I'm gonna save these twin motion trees for kind of my background here and for the foreground I'm gonna import something that's a little bit better than this now I would typically go just to you know your 3d warehouse fantastic place to find trees you know go into the 3d warehouse um, and you know you've got all these sketchup based models and you're going to search trees and you can set some parameters and namely when i'm looking for trees i'm looking for something with a high level of polygons something i mean if you get above 7k on a tree it's it's pretty certain that you're going to get a high level polygon now keep in mind some of these are ported over from something that are just basically a 2d image so even though that this shows that this is 22k it's actually a 2d image and it's not a real 
3D model tree. Whereas this looks like it is, you can see that it's got some soft shadowing in there, some hard shadows, um, and some 4K texture size. And this is kind of just one of those guess and check things. You've got to just download this, keep it in um, a folder hierarchy that makes sense to you and be able to upload it to twin motion. So now back in twin motion, I'm going to go to my import and open up and I'm going to get into where I keep my models and I've got my trees, plants and landscaping trees. And let's just grab something like a maple tree and let's just do, um, I'm going to keep the hierarchy. It's going to that's going to keep uh, for SketchUp um, models. That's going to keep the um, oh the hierarchy of, of groups or components. So it's going to keep the component hierarchy. Anyway, so I'm going to press OK. It's going to read that data and import it. It's going to import it based on um, the access of that model and how it is in SketchUp. Now, this particular model, I think, if I select on it in here, let me just bring my my scene graph up and I'm going to go all the way down. It's going to import it to the bottom of the scene graph here. And there we go. And I can hit this center node. You know, this will um, drag it on, on this axis versus this axis versus the Z axis. And this will just grab it and be able to place it to any geometry oriented to that geometry. There we go. So I've got it placed in the model now. Perfect. Now I'm going to scale it down, and so I'm going to go down here. And right now, by default, we're in the rot or we're in the move. I don't even know how they classify this. Um, and so I'm going to go to scale. Again, I've never watched any videos for Twin Motion. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just figuring it out as I go. So something I've discovered in the first 10 hours that I was playing with Twin Motion is that to be able to scale this uniformly, I need to be able to select the subcomponents here. And at this level, now it gives me this scale box. So I could just uniformly scale this by dragging this. That's fine. I could alternatively punch in a number. I'll do it for this. I seem to have a decent amount of control there. Uh, so there we go. So I've got this tree and when I select this tree, keep in mind, I just selected a component. So something to keep in mind. Uh, alternatively, when I imported this, I could have chosen to collapse all and then this would be grouped as one item and I wouldn't have this sub item. And for the purpose of trees, that might have been a good idea. In fact, let's just try it out. Let's delete this guy and we're going to import again. In fact, we got to delete it from the scene graph right here because we still got that folder hierarchy. So we'll delete it there. File import. Let's get back to that tree. And it was a maple tree. There we go. And under options, instead of collapse by material, we're going to go collapse by all. Let's do that fixed UV texture. No idea what this does, by the way. I'm sure as I learn this software more, I'll figure that out. I'll start watching some videos. So we've got a material name, use scene material, use imported material, keep both. This is just because we imported it previously and we're gonna use, uh, it doesn't really matter. So there we go. So now that's in there. Here's the maple tree and let's see if that did what I explained. It did. So there we go. I could get rid of this and since we've got, uh, oh, we don't have a front porch area yet, but Basically, I could get rid of this folder right here and bring the maple tree into the main um, scene graph space. But see, now we can move this and uniformly scale this at one time. So I'm gonna change my mode to move, which I think is, I was trying to find the quick key for this. I think it might be, there it is, the number four key on your PC. And I'll drag it up here to the front yard. You can see when it imported this time, we've got an offset here, which is, kind of obnoxious in my opinion. So again, keep in mind how you're importing these things, where they live in uh, your scene space um, so that you, when you save this to your um, your user folder in Twin Motion, it'll be easier to place. I liked it before when it was placing on the center of this axis. So um, it seems that Twin Motion seems to have picked its own center point um, because before our move node was centered exactly the way it should be so um, I've got this tree pretty much placed where I want it to be and now when I hit the scale here's gonna be the first problem is it's going to scale 
based on that access. And so it's not going to scale the way I want it to. Yeah, it's going to start dragging it towards that access as we scale it down. So a um, couple of little annoyances that'd be a tool that I'd want to see in a future version of Twin Motion is some way to reset the axis on a on the model space. So here we go, I'm gonna place it right where I want it to be, right there. And now that I've got this tree in place, I can go in, let's just select it, and we'll take a look at it on the scene graph, and then I can add this to my library, add this to user library. And I clicked it, and Twin Motion's not responding, and anytime that happens, I get very, very nervous. So I go back, let's just, so you can, you saw that again, I'm gonna go back all the way back to library and here in the bottom right hand corner is my user library. There is my maple tree. Let's make a new folder and we're gonna end up hitting rename and let's call this trees. Um, typical of most of my videos, whenever I input something into um, any input I do, I typically do all caps because it's unconventional and therefore it lets me know that that's something that I did. So there we go. I just, there's, there's no real indication that you're dragging it into this folder, but it did in fact go into this folder. And now I can grab this asset and place it as I please. Isn't that nice? Now it's in my user folder. So it's a great idea as you build these scenes out to save the assets that seem to work really well for you. So there we go. We've got a more of a high poly count tree and already we get the you know the idea that this could start looking really good <laughs> so um let's go on let's carry on and let's get back into some of the tools that are available in sketchup i'm going to delete these back trees and we're going to drop some of not sketchup excuse me twin motion i'm going to delete some of these trees and and we'll use some of twin motions trees so back in our contextual menu um Let's just do vegetation paint and let's grab a couple of these trees and pour, drag them into our model space here, our paint tool. And that way I can select multiple of these and use the paint tool. And this time around, let's drag this up a little bit and look at that. It's painting a random assortment of those trees. Isn't that fantastic? I mean, this is really, that's the power of this particular program is you can get these trees placed really, really fast. And let's see if I can get out of that. So there we go. So you can see anytime I select those trees, it's a grouping because we use the scatter brush to pick out that grouping. If I remove one of these from this section, it's going to remove there we go, look at that, I deleted that and it disappeared. Now, I already painted that particular part of, of this terrain model. So if I grab this willow tree and drag it in here, look, it's just gonna produce those trees in there. And so the only way to really, you know, fine tune where these trees are showing up, like I don't want this tree right here, this is when we need to use our erase tool. There we go. And so then I can paint more trees, I can, you know, to my content. Look at that, isn't that fantastic? Such a cool tool. Makes things go way faster. And I and so that's an instancing tool. I wish it worked for more than just the trees. That would make a huge difference. And also you can see there's no real control over um, scale that I know of. We've got a density control, which is great. Uh, let's take a look. We've got age, but we don't have any real randomization here where I want to randomize the size of these trees. So the trick to that is similar to what we did with the grass is that horse chestnut. I'm just going to bring it in this model again. And so this horse chestnut might be, oh, I don't know, a much smaller one than the other one. And that way we can get kind of that semblance of a random sizing effect, right? Okay, there we go. So now we're, getting, we're kind of getting an idea of, of how we can populate the space. 
you know, this is farther than 70 feet away. It looks, you know, really good from this distance. This tree, a more high poly count tree, it looks polished from this distance. So that's kind of the end of, of this segment of the video, the tree segment of the video. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start um, kind of working on this driveway. So uh, stay tuned for the next video. And, and as always, click subscribe.